Do you ever make a decision that going in, you know, you should not do? Like, you know, it's a terrible, terrible idea, but yet for some reason, you still do it. Yeah, so on that note, I'm going to CES next year. Plex is awesome and everything, but if you really want to squeeze the most features out of your Plex media server, you can get a Plex Pass. Now, while there are many benefits to having a Plex Pass versus a free user account, my favorite one is getting early access to new features that Plex has not yet released to the general public. So if you're like me and you want to try out those new features, check out the description down below. Down there, you can either purchase a Plex Pass for yourself or a friend, and hey, if you don't have a free account, use my link as well. It helps me out. So check out the description down below to get your Plex Pass today. What's up, YouTube? Jason here with Jason Bites back episode number 29. And wow, that's hitting on the desk and that's gonna be super annoying for the rest of this video. Episode number 29 and also my official announcement that I'm going to CES next year, even though I know it is a terrible decision. Last year I didn't enjoy it. I had some weird expectations and I know all of this is gonna go down the same exact way as it was last year. So the only difference is I know what I'm getting myself into. And that little thing in the back of my head says, you know, Jason, it's still six days in Vegas. So maybe you'll have some fun while you're there. So I think that's literally like one of two reasons why I decided to go again. Definitely still going to LTX 2020, but CES 2020 is just an add-on that I regretted the moment I purchased. Also, in lieu of going to CES, I uh, launched a little basic merch thing. So this is also an official announcement for that. You can get this shirt that has mother shuckas printed on the back. You can check out the links to that in the description down below. Basically, it is a very generic shirt and I'm calling it my CES fun shirt and I've sold six of them so far. So, you know, that's neat. If I had to give you a review on the shirt, I'd say the quality of the shirt is pretty decent. The quality of the print, Eh, solid six out of 10. I mean, it's a little faded and not necessarily great. I was in the whole mindset, like I need a bigger channel before I launch any kind of merch whatsoever, but I kept getting yelled at to do it. And then CS kind of pushed me over the ledge a little bit. And a big shout out to everybody who commented on my last video where I posted me digging into the new server, AKA not Zeus, AKA I'm just going to officially call it. This is it. This is the moment. It's definitely going to be called Loki. I keep coming back to that name. Part of me wanted to call it Spider but spider is a long word and it's like more to type. So I, I stuck with Loki. I could name it SPDR, but then knowing me, I'd forget and like not do it right and be like, what is this? So, you know, I'm really dumb. So I'm just assuming Loki is gonna be a lot easier to type out. What is that freaking reflecting off of? Don't know. So thank you for everyone who commented on that video. I am digging into the server. I got a lot of things that I'm thinking about doing with it. And one of the questions I had was, you know, like how does this backplane gonna interact with the controller? And what kind of limitations I'm gonna have with bandwidth, that sort of thing. Uh, so I've gotten a lot of help. A lot of people, especially hopping on Discord uh, to help me out and give me some information. And I do definitely appreciate all of those comments. I have yet to have a chance to go through and respond to a lot of them, but I have been kind of keeping an eye on them and reading through some of them and discussing some of the comments on Discord. Discord. So uh, thank you to everyone who joined Discord to kind of, you know, help me out and walk me through some of that stuff. So much appreciated. I've said this before and I'll continue to say it. I am just an idiot with a camera. So all of this is a learning experience and it's fun for me. So I enjoy the feedback and be like, hey, this would work. This won't. On this particular subject of the build, I just kind of want it to be the fastest and I don't want to buy stuff that's not going to do what I need. But I think what I've landed on are two PCI Gen 2 controllers, one for each backplane. So from my understanding, that should give me the best performance without bottlenecking or splitting lanes between the backplanes with one controller. If I am completely wrong, let me know down below. So without further ado, let's get to the questions. If my laptop will not die on me because I forgot to plug it in last time I used it and I'm at 39%, okay. First question is from Tin Ramich. I hope HDR tone mapping is coming. Every time I go to my sister's house for a holiday and we watch stuff from my server at home, the 4K stuff is of course washed out because it has to transcode for hardware support and because of my upload speed. Tim, I included this question for very specific reason, and that is 4K transcoding sucks. I'm just gonna say it, anyone out there that likes to do 4K transcoding, you're maybe a little crazy and you should go to the doctor and have yourself checked out because you cray cray. <laughs> okay, that might've been a small internal discord joke 
with some Patreons and some Discord, but you know, that one person is gonna get that. It's gonna be hilarious. But as it is right now, 4K transcoding is just a waste of power just across the board. I mean, if we completely ignore the whole HDR to SDR, you know, tone mapping issue where everything's get, gets washed out, uh, past all of that, it still takes way more resources to transcode your media than you should have to ever worry about. Not only that, but people gather 4K content to have the most crisp and like delicious looking movies that they could ever watch. And they wanna watch them on their 4K TVs within their home. And you know, those can be like 60, 70, 80, 100 megabit per second video files. So if you're trying to do that and you're trying to transcode multiple streams, friends, family, etc., and next thing you know, you're gonna be running into other issues like, you know, limitations of hard drive speed, for example. So all in all, my point is this, even if HDR to SDR tone mapping becomes a thing, or at least when it becomes a thing, I still don't believe in 4K transcoding right now. It's just, it takes too much resources. And I think personally, it is a waste of your compute power. Maybe someday it might, but for now, no. By the way, I learned that I can like swipe. So that's pretty cool. Before I hit keys, you know, like a caveman. And then I realized, hey, this thing has touchscreen. Did not realize that before. Andy D said, your rack is a comms rack, not a server rack. It's for switches and patch panels, not big ass servers. <sighs> I know. I'm looking for like a half height right now of like for cheap, God, these things are expensive, but I want like, I don't know, like a 25U, you know, fully enclosed, fully deep, gotta be probably at least 36 inches, I think is the size of Loki. So, you know, it's gotta be, but I want it to be nice, you know? And if it's decked out with RGB, hey, you know, bonus points. I wanna get rid of the old comms, budget, Craigslist, like $50 server rack that I have, but I'm looking at some of these and brand new, they're just stupid expensive if you want a nice enclosed one. So I'm keeping an eye on Craigslist and stuff to try to find one, but you know, really as someone on Discord pointed out, like all of the old enterprise stuff, like those big Dell racks, those are bought in bulk and you can buy those on the used market for a lot cheaper because they are so abundant. Whereas the half rack ones are not as commonly used. So of course you're gonna have to buy those new or pay a premium. That's kind of where I'm stuck. I want the, the bulk big pricing of the, the smaller rack. Next question is from Sean House Tour. Sure. Studio. Hidden room. Entertainment room. Laundry room. Bedroom. Kitchen. Box room. Main bathroom. Another bathroom. Other bathroom. Hallway. Spare bedroom. Another spare bedroom. Server room. Living room. Closet. Garage. All right, next question is from Andy. Dude, you gotta lose the effing AirPods while recording videos. You look like a douche. <laughs> I 100% agree, Andy. 100% agree. Okay, the story behind the douche pod or the AirPods is actually very specific. And that is I've recorded stuff on my iPhone before, like when I'm recording videos and I've had my headphones in like the regular wired headphones. And when you're recording something, whether you're pointing forward or backwards with your, your iPhone just really depends on what microphone it uses. So if you're pointing at something that maybe is making a little bit of noise and you're trying to talk behind it, it's like picking up everything in front of it and then your voice gets drowned out easily. Sometimes I would plug in the headphones that were wired and it would always be using the microphone hanging off of the headphones. Although it never really sounded great, it was still a thing. Thing. So I got the douche pods for two or the AirPods for two reasons. One, mowing the lawn. Mowing the lawn with the AirPods, it's amazing, and I will never go back to anything different. So, you know, come at me, bro. It's amazing. But two, I'm going to CES and I am heavily, heavily, heavily considering not taking the AX100 build, the one where I'm lugging it around, walking around, just life is miserable and hating everybody and everything because it's so heavy and I just I don't want to do that anymore. So my idea, and I tested this out in that video and it failed miserably, was to have the AirPods in my ear and I always have, you know, balanced microphones and it's always recording and I always have good audio. Unfortunately, the iPhone did not use the AirPods, so I didn't realize that till I was like halfway through the video and realized I was just kind of looking dumb for no apparent benefit whatsoever. But you know what? I look dumb a lot, so I'm kind of used to it. I mean, sometimes it scares me. You know, I go like in the bathroom in the morning after I wake up, flip on the light. And <laughs> Next question is from Andrew. The P4000 has the same number of NVE NC chips as the P2000, rendering the same performance for transcoding. This video helps explain that with Plex. Okay, you're you're linking to Sloth Tech T. 
TV, I think. But the thing about the P4000 is that it's not all for Plex. This is not just a Plex server. I mean, I plan on putting a th at least a Threadripper chip in this and probably at least a P4000 uh, graphics card in this. So I want to be able to use this for a little bit more than just Plex. While the P4000 and the P2000 might have similar performance, you know, specifically for Plex, I plan on using it for a couple other different things. I haven't really touched on those plans more past, actually I did include in a Patreon video, um, but it is definitely something I wanna get more out of my server, especially because it's gonna be something that's powered on all the time, and when it is idle, it shouldn't use too much power. But if I wanna ramp it up, I wanna be able to hit it hard with, you know, some of the stuff I've planned. It's not always all about Plex, just usually. Next question is, oh, that went out, okay. Next question is from, Mark, what about using the P2000 on a cheap CPU, like a 200GE? It's like an old AMD processor. Well, actually, Mark, I addressed this in a video where I'm like, hey, let's take an old, super old CPU. I think it was an FX something, some, some trail off there. But I used the P2000 and I supercharged an old AMD build with the P2000 with Plex. And yes, I did get decent performance, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to Plex, even though you can use hardware accelerated transcoding to transcode uh, video files, if you have a severely weak CPU, you know something really, really just not capable of doing much, you are going to still run into issues. And that is for bare minimum, at least a couple different reasons. One, Plex still has to transcode audio for some devices. So you might run into issues if you just don't have the CPU to back up the number of video transcode you wanna do. And two, well, the P2000 in all its glory cannot handle everything that is out there. So you may very well run into instances where your Plex server is going to have to rely on CPU transcoding for whatever reason, whether that's like a 4K or a color profile thing or whatever it might be, the P2000 is not always going to be there for you. I'm not saying you can't get it to work. I proved that you can, but if you're gonna spend that much money on a P2000, 350, 450, I would recommend spending a little money, at least, you know, maybe 100, 200 bucks on a decent, somewhat current gen CPU motherboard combo. Again, not saying you can't do it, I'm just saying. You might have a bad time if you go too cheap on your CPU, that's all. Next question is from Nate. I see that you like target practice with your gun. Do you think guns are necessary and should be in our society? Also, gun versus camera for home defense. Well, Nate, the thing about taking a stance on anything on the internet is that half the people will love you for it and half the people will hate you for it. But you know what? I own guns and I like guns. I don't shoot as often as I'd like to, but when I do, I like to go and do target practice. It's fun, it's kind of a stress reliever, really. As far as being necessary in our society, I think our society has made them necessary just because all the bad guys have them, so if you don't have them, then you're defenseless. Gun versus cameras, though? Both. I mean, you can have a camera to say, look, he broke in, you know? He threatened me, he gone. And just in case you lost it, the dislike button is right down there. Next question is from, Sago Saka. Sugo Saka. Oh, jeez. Sugo Saka. After using your chair for a while, has it broken in and gotten more comfortable at all? I mean, I guess a little bit. I don't sit in it very often, um, but I still hate it. If I sit in here for like, I don't know, an hour, then my butt goes numb. I am to the point now though, I can sit in here and record like a 30 minute video and my butt's not getting numb after 30 minutes, but it does start to kick in, you know, 45, 50 minutes, an hour, somewhere around there. So I still hate this chair, but you know, it looks good on camera. So I'm not gonna throw it away. I mean, I had like a folding chair here before. So this, it's better than a folding chair, at least for, you know, videos. And I'm still looking for a new chair for the computer room. I'm just scared to buy one online. And when I tried to go buy one from Kansas City, which was like a three, three and a half hour drive, I almost died from a tornado. So now I'm scared to leave my basement. Next question. Joey Image says, Fruit Loops or Frosted Flakes? Fruit Loops, duh. Next question is from Normal. Have you ever set up IPTV on Plex Media Server? And no, I have not, but I need to. And that's something that's been like, 
an idea. I just haven't done it yet. It's HD home run or whatever. Someone had something out there that I was going to look into. And then it was like one of those ideas. I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I forgot I was going to do it. So I never did it. So I have not, but I need to look into it because I want to look into it because I think it's like, a lot cheaper than just a regular cable subscription and you can get a lot of channels. So it is definitely something that I need to do in the future. I just have not done it yet. It's interesting though. Next question is from Josh. I've started using Google Remote Desktop because of all the BS with TeamViewer. Well, I included this to say that actually when I initially said I was having issues with TeamViewer, again, it's like a repetitive thing. I emailed them, they emailed me back. They, they wanted me to basically fill out this form where it was like name, address, social security number, blood type, you know, hair follicle width, you know, semen count. I mean, they basically wanted me to like fill out like an extensive bio credit app thing and fax it to them or something to declare that I'm using my team viewer for a personal account and not for a commercial account, which is irritating because the most commercial I got out of my team viewer was logging into the laptop right next to me because I didn't want to turn my chair to work it. It's a little irritating, but you know what? Team viewer in its own right, is amazing. And when you're not getting flagged for illegitimate commercial use, it works great. But I have since tested out many different applications, including Google Remote Desktop, and I've landed on an application called AnyDesk. It's definitely not as great as TeamViewer is with being able to log in and get a list of all your stuff and just click on what you want, which was great, especially for those computers that maybe once in like four years I'd access for some reason. It's nice to have those on a list. Like my grandpa's computer, for example, I don't remember the last time I accessed his computer, but one of these days he's going to download a virus and I'm going to have to like log in and I won't be able to. So kind of stuck there. But AnyDesk is pretty nice. It just allows me to start the program. I got a little icon. I can click it. It allows me to go into my computer. And when I close it out, it doesn't annoy me with a little commercial pop-up thing. So, so far for my needs, AnyDesk has been a good solution so far. Next question is from... Nobody. That was it. All right, guys. Well, that is it for today's Jason Bites Back. As always, this show is brought to you by my awesome Patreon subscribers. So thank you again to all my Patreon subscribers and all you $10 people out there. If you didn't catch it yesterday, I launched the Patreon video for the month and I actually dove into a few things behind the scenes. So, you know, definitely make sure to check the Patreon page for that if you are not on my Discord server and already have accessed that in the Patreon chat. But thank you everyone for watching, liking, and subscribing. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns that you want the best possible chance of being answered next video, next month, post them down in the comments below. So thank you, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day. How's my battery life on this? Let's see. 35%. I mean, I've been recording for 33 minutes. I dropped 4%. I mean, that's impressive. That's good. You know, no complaints there. So well, I launched the merch, right? And I was sitting here thinking, you know, what would be better? What was his name? Uh, not Jake, or was it Jake Paul or Logan Paul? One of the Paul's brothers people, like they had this like song where it was like, buy my merch, buy my merch, buy my merch. I almost wanted to do that in like the most sarcastic and horrible way possible, but when I like played it, have you ever like come up with an idea and you play it back in your head and you're like, oh, let's play this out. And then even in your head, it is so cringe that you kind of like, you vomit a little bit, you, you know, like you just little, yeah. So I didn't do that, thought about it, but I figured I just don't want to lose that many subscribers, especially because 77.8, you know, that means here soon, like, a year, maybe, give or take, probably a little less than a year, I'm gonna have 100,000, which means YouTube is going to officially recognize me as a YouTube channel, which is nice. I get a little plaque, it's like, it's like the size of this laptop, maybe bigger, a lot bigger, but they're gonna say, hey, congratulations, we acknowledge that you exist. And I'll cry a little bit. Probably not, but I'll think about crying a little bit. It's gonna be awesome.